I turned this bucket from printables into a gesture controlled bin for my 3D printer using only two components, swipe to open and swipe to close. In this video, I'll share with you exactly how I built it. But first, let's go over the components. All it took was a server motor and a 3D gesture sensor. The server tilts the bin's floor as the sensor detects my hand. Both of them connect directly to an Arduino Nano, and I chose this over an Arduino Mega due to its size. Now that we have the components, it's time to start modeling the bin. Each part was modeled in Autodesk Fusion, keeping it organized and easy to assemble. The dimensions were based on the component sizes as well as the size of the printer. So once everything is complete, we'll take each part into the Bamboo Lab slicer and begin the 3D printing process. For this project, I wanted to print the bin in two different colors since it would match the color of my printer as much as possible. So I chose dark gray, which was printed in PETG filament, and white in PLA filament. What I noticed is that the white parts were printed much cleaner than the gray parts, and you can see that there were a lot of strings across the gray parts, which I removed later. I also used discs while printing some parts to avoid any lifting, and I just used a blade to cut them off afterwards. I also used a clipper to remove the support from any parts that required them. Okay, so now that we have all parts of the bin printed, it's time to start assembling it. We'll start by attaching the box slider onto the main part, adding a little bit of super glue to keep the fit strong. Next, it's time to use one of the attachments and connect it to the 3D gesture sensor holder. It's quite a snug fit, so I won't really be using any super glue for this part. For the battery holder at the top, I will be using super glue again since these holds require it. I also want to make sure that it's as perpendicular to the box as possible, I don't want it to be too wonky. here. The servo motor holder will also require an attachment, so much like the other holder, it's a snug fit and it won't require any super glue at all, just using the ends of the pliers to wedge it in. However, I will use super glue to stick it onto the box. The final attachment will be for the Arduino Nano holder. I will use glue on both the attachment and on the server holder for extra stability. It's been designed in a way to allow space for the wires to connect onto the board which we will do later on. So far, it's looking pretty good. The fits are solid and the color contrast is making it look quite aesthetic. So now that the bin has been assembled fully, we have to make sure that everything is working exactly the way it should, which is why we need to prototype it. Here is a circuit diagram to explain exactly how I'm going to wire everything together. For the prototyping, I'll be using a separate Arduino board to the final version, and I will be soldering pins onto the back of this board so that I can then connect it onto a breadboard. I also solder some wires together in a Y shape since some of them share the same pins such as a 5 volt and a ground pin. We'll start by wiring the server motor on pin 9. Voltage in is for the 9 volt battery, this ground pin is for the gesture sensor, the 5 volt pin is for both components, A5 and A5 for are for SDA and SCL of the gesture sensor, this ground pin for the server and battery. From here, we need to put the wires of the 3D gesture sensor through the holder, designed by coming in through the side to keep things tidy. Then once through, connect it back onto the sensor, and the sensor should slot in its place very smoothly. To keep the wires organized, I just used the velcro that the sensor came with to hold them in place. Moving on to the server motor, the shape cutout allows for it to sit in fully, and also a cutout in the box just enough for the gear to show. The floor will be attached to the gear, 
ensuring that the diameter is enough for a very tight fit. And here's what it looks like with the components attached. The idea is to keep the bin compact, making sure the wires do not get in the way of its functionality. The last thing left to do is just wire the components onto the board. Now we can upload the Arduino code onto the board. Here is the full code, and this part in particular is responsible for the functionality of the bin. As you can see, the prototyping worked and the bin opens and closes. So now we'll use another Arduino board, but to actually put into the nano holder and solder the pins in the opposite direction to the prototype version, making it much easier to connect the wires directly onto the board. Just like before, upload the code onto the board. Finally, to make the bin come to life, we'll connect the 9V battery using the pins, then slide it into its holder, making the whole project self-contained. To further tidy the wires, I will just use some zip ties in areas that will cause the least issues, then use a clipper to cut off the excess. Now let's slide the bin onto the printer and test it. Swipe to open and swipe to close. So there you have it. That is exactly how I automated the filament bin for my 3D printer. And all you need is some sort of inspiration, which is what I had. And then you can look to see if you can make any tweaks to make the project unique to you. And if you are interested in seeing more about how I do this, you can take a look at this over here, where I not only go over some electronics, I also do some 3D printing to make functional projects. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.